Well, hello, how much Festiva? Welcome back. I've owned a key truck for about, I don't know, three, four years now, and uh, these are nine must things to do for maintenance when buying a key truck. This is a short video, but it's a must to watch if you're thinking about buying one or you own one already. Let's get into it. Okay, number one. This was one of the biggest problems of my truck when I first got it was a water pump. So timing belt and water pump. Mine was already shot when I got it, pouring water through it, but if yours isn't even leaking yet, you must replace the timing belt and water pump. You don't know when this thing will service last. A lot of these trucks have been neglected over in Japan, shipped over here with some few mismatched parts. Maybe the timing belt's never been done. They can only go so many miles or years before that belt breaks. A lot of the engines are interference engines. Some of them might not be, but you don't want to definitely break your timing belt smash a piston into the valves and have a destroyed engine. I've seen a lot of these on Craigslist with a bad engine and I'm thinking it's probably a timing belt. Imagine this truck sitting in Japan for a long time, gets shipped over the US, we're ripping down the highways with these trucks, revving them out and bam, piston goes into the valves. You bend, this is a four valves per cylinder, so there's 12 valves in this thing, you bend a bunch of them. Engine's probably shot after that point. So water pump, timing belt, number one thing to check and replace before you drive it much. So number two is your cooling system and vacuum lines. Look over all your cooling hoses going from your radiator to your block and up from your block to your heater core. Uh, make sure that if there's any cracks on them, you replace them and look over your vacuum lines going from vacuum tanks to uh, you know rear differential locks all the way to the carb, all the different stuff because these trucks are getting really old and a lot of the rubber is cracking and the cracked vacuum lines will make the truck run really poorly. And uh, you know, you blow a hose down the road you could blow a head gasket after that. So after I replaced my water pump on this thing, I started popping hoses here and there because they're really old. And so I just replaced everything throughout the whole system. Got tired of leaks and anything like that. And instead of trying to find pre-bent hoses specifically for my Suzuki Carry, I just went on eBay and bought a bunch of silicone uh, tubing, a bunch of just bulk sizes and just pre-cut them to length. The silicone flex is really nice for different angles. So that worked good for me. So that's number two vacuum lines for cracks and cooling system hoses. Number three is uh, check your thermostat, just replace the thing. Uh, you don't want to be cruising down the road with this thing, even if your cooling system's in good shape, you don't want that thermostat to stick because you could overheat it, blow a head gasket, and get rid of the coolant that comes in these things. Almost every vehicle I've got that's been imported from Japan, the cooling system's been massively neglected. Get that coolant out of there. A lot of these will have a drain on the base of the radiator. Drain it out, flush it out even a few times. I'm just running regular green coolant in mine. It works fine. Just get some nice purified water, blend it 50-50 with the coolant. Just get some fresh coolant in your machine because the corrosion that was happening inside my radiator and my block was not good. You don't want that in your machine. Even if the rest of your cooling system looks good, definitely get some fresh coolant in there. So, number four is oil and oil filter change. They're really easy to do. They hold about three to four quarts. Mine holds about four quarts in this thing. Uh, you know, I'll put a few numbers down below for my Suzuki Carry. If I know a Honda Acti filter, I'll put that down below in the description. But you should be able to get a filter for your machine almost anywhere, Walmart, AutoZone, most auto parts stores. You just have to do a little digging around on the internet, figure out the cross-reference number. Like I said, I know a few from my Suzuki Carry I'll put down below. Get some good 1030, 1040 in it, and uh, the truck's gonna thank you for that. So number five, if you happen to have any cash still left in your wallet after doing all those things and getting a truck, uh, consider spark plugs, rotor, cap, spark plug wires, and check your timing. When I got my truck, all that stuff is in okay shape. I have a replacement kit to put on here. They're not gonna be very cheap. Try to find some good quality parts. But my timing was way out. My truck maybe never had the timing done on it. I think it had 30 to 40,000 kilometers on it. And I put a timing light on it and I tuned it up and man, the truck started running a lot better. And uh, I think I had advanced the timing quite a bit and it definitely made more power. So do those things. They're gonna cost you a little bit of chunk of change. That's a drawback on these key trucks is all those components are gonna definitely cost you more. You're gonna be able to find that stuff on Amazon or eBay. There's a few special uh, import house parts houses in the US you can order online, but they usually double the cost of that stuff So uh, look around give your truck a little tune-up. It's gonna probably be good for as long as you own it 
Okay, so number six is gonna be check your CV joints. This thing only has CV joints on the front. It has a solid axle on the back. My brother's Honda Acti Attack has CV joints front and back. So check your CV joint boots. If they're torn, try to order a rebuild kit for them. You can take these couplers apart. You put new boots on them and band them. Maybe treat yourself to a little banding tool. I'll put a link below for one I have. Uh, get that kind of stuff. I have not been happy with the CV joint boots I have ordered on eBay. They last about a year and a half. It has nothing to do with my truck being lifted. They're garbage rubber. So I'm going to try to seek out some, maybe try to find some that's a little more expensive. Uh, maybe from uh, Japan or I might try to go a silicone boot route, something like that. So I rebuilt the front on one side and about a year, year and a half into it, the upper one ripped again. It looked like the rubber just could not handle the grease. Just rubbers and stuff like that these days are just pretty low quality. So seek yourself out a good CV joint boot kit, clean them out really well and pack them full of grease. Uh, do that before you destroy the joint because these get pretty expensive buying new CV joints. So the best thing is to do is to rebuild them. All right, so tip number seven, must maintenance. Check your oils. I know you already did your engine oil, but there's got more oils on this thing. Check your rear diff, make sure you got gear oil in it. Check your front differential, make sure you got oil in it. Make sure it's clean. If it's not, get fresh oil in it both. And check your transmission oil. Uh, and some trucks may have a separate transfer case that takes separate oil. So just look it over, check the oils that should be in your machine. I know on my truck runs 90 weight front and back. I think maybe 1040 in the transmission with lighter oil. Mine were already done from the previous owner when I got it, but I still got in there because the worst thing you want to do is run your truck around for six months and then go to check and find out you can't get your finger in on any oil in the rear diff or something like that, or it's all grimy and nasty or metallic. So make sure you got all your oils topped off in your whole running gear system here and uh, you'll be good to go. Number eight is check your tires. They may look like they have good tread, but go through them, make sure they're aired up to the proper pressure. Check between the treads, because I've seen a lot of these trucks imported from Japan with garbage tires. They might have tread on, but they're all dry rot. They either have cracks all over the sidewall or cracks between the tread, or they're straight up bulging and splitting. My brother's Honda, we picked up from an importer and the tires were awful. You go down the road, you have the gnarliest wobble and a bad pole. We got back to the place that we bought it from after doing a little test drive and the tire had a giant bulge and a split right down the center of the seam of the, between the tread. So the tires were just shot right off the bat and dangerous. So I got these guys on eBay. I'll try to find a link to those on eBay or Amazon. They're a good mud terrain tire. After having them on here for a few years, they're starting to wear in pretty well. Um, probably have to replace them here in the next six to eight months. But anyhow, make sure you get yourself a good set of tires. If you're driving a truck mainly on the street, get yourself a good set of road tires. If you're gonna be doing stuff like I do, gravel roads and a lot of mud driving and some snow, I'd recommend a nice little mud terrain tire. I've upgraded rim sizes on my truck to run a 13 inch mud tire, which are kind of hard to find. Or you can run the 12 inch version that come on the trucks. There's a lot of good 12 inch tires that still fit on stock rims. So get yourself a good set of tires if your truck has garbage ones. All right, number nine. Flush your brake fluid. My master cylinder is hidden up in the dash. You pull up a little cap uh, and it's inside a little covered area up in the dash. Figure out where your master cylinder is. Make sure to put some good uh, DAT3 or DOT4, whatever it recommends in there. Lead your brakes all the way around. Flush out old fluid out because you don't want to deal with the sticking wheel cylinder in the back from rusty old fluid because uh, it's going to cost you quite a bit trying to get those parts for these things. Uh, flush your fluid. Pull off your wheels, double check your pads up front, double check your shoes in the back, make sure you got plenty of life on them. If not, order some replacements. I've found that these trucks don't have that many miles. The pads are always usually in pretty decent shape, but if not, get some freshies on there and uh, you know bleed your brake system while you're you know flushing it all. And then if you got a lot of excessive pedal throw, adjust your brakes. On my Suzuki Carry, I used to have to do a double pump to get them to really grab. And uh, you basically on this thing has automatic adjusting brakes. So you got to go in reverse and pull up on the parking brake and then do that two or three times. And that will adjust your back brakes up. If that's not working, pull your drums off, find the adjuster in there and manually adjust it. Make sure your drum slide back on. You didn't over adjust it. Uh, on the Honda, my brother's Acti, I think it has a little rubber plug that comes off the back of the wheel. Uh, housing and you can use a little screwdriver in there for a star adjuster and adjust your brakes up so you can um, 
have less excess uh, pedal throw on that. So don't neglect your brakes. The uh, brake systems on these things are okay. They work okay, but um, just make sure they're in tip top shape. Well, I hope you enjoyed my video. I hope you found some good information on it and I hope it keeps your key truck going on the road for years to come. Well-maintained machine's gonna purr, gonna be trouble-free for a long time for you. And uh, yeah, get wrenching on your machine. Make sure it's got uh, routine maintenance, taken care of really well. Um, if you haven't seen this truck or my camper before, I put a playlist down below to a bunch of different camping videos and maintenance videos on this machine when I got it. The previous owner did a lot of body work and did it up really nice, but it had a lot of mechanical issues I had to take care of on it. So it's going to be a lot of like, oh, I did a water pump timing belt, a bunch of different tune-up stuff on here, change out the tires, a lot of that stuff. So there's going to be a playlist down below. I highly recommend before you ask too many questions about tires and things like that I have on here, just go watch those videos. You're going to find all the information in them. So until next time, thanks for watching. Take care.